So far, the anniversary year has been rather like wandering in the desert, receiving few scraps of manna from heaven, and while last week's episode, The Cold War, had a lot going for it, it was hardly the promised land, and keeping one's faith can be hard. Clara only just now feels like an actual companion, and everything since Amy and Rory's departure in The Angels Take Manhattan, including the Christmas special, has essentially been a precursor to what is to come. Even The Cold War was really just an introduction of the Ice Warriors for a new audience, and a teaser for the Ice Warrior action we're promised for later. Loyal fans waited months for the second half of a season of Doctor Who, and what we got was three and a quarter hours worth of prologue. I started to fear that the season finale and the anniversary special might yet be superb, but that by then I'd be in such a bad mood I wouldn't enjoy them, and waiting months to see the special after a disappointing season, supposing it remained disappointing, a bad special would be a kick in the face. Recently, I have laughed along with my friend Hugh James's mockery of Doctor Who, and in particular Moffat's writing, have read an article by a fellow lifelong fan losing enthusiasm for the show and found myself agreeing with much of what he said, and the feeling I think would be best described as not wanting to be a 50th anniversary party pooper. Indeed, if I see an enthusiastic review by, say, a teenager who calls everything brilliant and Moffat a genius every five minutes, despite my envy of anyone who had a happy, optimistic adolescence, I'm hardly going to rain on his parade, any more than an atheist should attend a Christian funeral and yell, HE'S WORM FOOD! at the grievers. And we're back to losing faith. There is a part of the article linked in the description where I both agree and disagree. The actors. Matt Smith is indeed a very talented actor and the scripts he received were increasingly bad. Perhaps if we'd just had the speech from Rings of Alabama Boom Basket without the opera, it might have saved the episode. He cries a real tear. He does the job. I disagree about Jenna Louise Coleman being a problem uh, in herself. I say she shines, but her character treatment is the mystery of the girl died twice. And Nicola Bryant, who played Perry in the classic series, recalls having a character treatment on which she was able to elaborate. Knowing where you were born, your uncle raised you and was a bastard, you can decide things and work with that, fill in the gaps, know the person. Clara was introduced as cocky, precocious, independent, in your face, feisty. In the Cold War, she's utterly subservient and always defers to the Doctor, as if desiring simply to impress him, despite having nearly blown him off entirely two episodes earlier. Clara is a mystery, even to the writers and to the poor woman who plays her. Hyde is by Neil Cross, who also wrote The Wings of Ask Her Banana Hat a.k.a. sing about memories, do a big speech and hold up a leaf and scare all the big CGI away. So while the preview trailer looked promising, I wasn't expecting much. So here we have it. Hide. A ghost story. And to be fair, it's been a while. Is this where Cross redeems himself? Actually, yes. While I won't say this episode will exactly set the world alight, I really enjoyed it. We are taken to the 1970s and Professor Warner, an ex-army officer with survival guilt turned ghost hunter, has moved into a haunted house with his assistant, Emma Grayling, an empath. Despite her abilities, they have not worked out their feelings for one another. The unrequited love business was one of the things that gave me a sense of trepidation at the beginning of the episode, along with the pre-title scene ending with Clara introducing herself and the Doctor as Ghostbusters, as if that reference would mean anything to two people in the 70s. Some of the dialogue is pretty awful, but some of it is very good. There is even a very powerful Clara scene. I'm just a ghost to you. We're all just ghosts to you. It was an episode that took a while to get to its heart, granted, but was both moody and moving, spooky and satisfying. One oddity is that I'd placed this episode in the first half of the 20th century, only to read it was meant to be set in 1974, when there is very little uh, 70s-ness about it, it is also the first time I've seen the second law of thermodynamics used as a plot device since the Tom Baker story Legopolis in 1981. Must say though, bit odd that entropy would have more of an effect on the TARDIS than it would on the Doctor. Anyway, the ghost is really a stranded time traveller in a pocket universe that could be photographed through the whole of Earth history. Okay, one thing Neil Cross. She can't be taken home because... 
her being recorded as missing is, say it with me people, a fixed point! Fuck you. Fuck you sideways. Fuck you sideways with hammers. Seriously, you didn't even have to put that line in. Other than that, this is a fine standalone episode which actually manages to marshal the Clara storyline rather well. The Doctor describes Clara as the only mystery worth solving. It transpires that the Doctor took her there to meet Emma Grayling, to tell him what feels different about Clara, but according to Emma, nothing. Just a normal woman and more scared than she lets on, which I would expect of any Doctor Who companion. We also get more of the TARDIS not liking Clara, which is an interesting touch. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I now find myself caring about the Clara story again, and Doctor Who seems to have regained a bit of that magic spark it seemed to have lost for a while there. Let's hope the episodes keep improving.